out. We haven't been able to control the ocean that I know of. Uh, the ocean does what it wants to do, and you basically get out of the way, depending on the size of the wave. Uh, we build uh, nuclear reactors on fault zones. Oh, well, my heart, no, that's quite clear. I think it's been dead for 200 years. Yeah, well, it's on a 600-year cycle, you dink. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, the nuclear reactor, among other things, goes in the toilet. Well, then there's a problem with safety. Most of the nuclear reactors ain't safe. The good evidence of that is Japan. Uh, we could go in there, and I know the method is, or methods necessary to contain what's going on, and they refuse to do that. Well, that tells me that whoever's in charge wants that stuff out in the atmosphere and to, uh, quote, cause those health problems so we don't last so long. Agenda 21 says reduce the population. So, back to Mother Earth. If you can imagine all this stuff going on, and the fact that we're smarter than God because we know that he couldn't have meant what he said and we got to make a different religion out of the same one that we had before called divisions, uh, <clears throat> then you get the idea that maybe... Uh, Mother Earth has been stressed a bit. Add a few nuclear explosions, add some wars to it, and I'm surprised Mother Earth has not shook the fleas off yet. However, uh, she has reached a stress point where she's going to have to make some adjustments, and supposedly that's supposed to happen sometime this year. The severity of which has two different uh, levels to it. One is there are supposed to be areas that are safe, and will withstand the adjustments. And then again, there's also uh, some of these websites that say ET says that we're going to come get you and we'll hold you up in the air and uh, wait until all the nasty goes away and then we'll put you back. You can hear anything on the Internet. <clears throat> I'm not going to say whether you believe it or not. I'm going to suggest that uh, if you really want to know and you put everything you are, everything you got, into the question, and you aim that at a higher deity. Uh, that can be uh, whatever higher deity form you choose. Uh, that you will get an answer. Uh, doesn't matter the question. Mother Earth is at the point now where she's uh, getting ready. Uh, hopefully, she won't be too mad at us to uh, rectify a whole bunch of these things. I have uh, worked with the spiritual entity known as Gia on a couple of different occasions. Those occasions involve what's called harp, and uh, it is an atmospheric harmonic uh, implosion that causes earthquakes. It activates fault lines, things of this nature, and that's exactly the way it's used in this particular sense. Uh, one of the fault lines originates uh, uh, in eastern Tennessee, Kentucky, and there's a whole bunch of nuclear reactors in that area. And then at the other end of it, you've got New Madrid. New, Ma New Madrid fault line is the one that changed the uh, uh, Mississippi River, moved it, flipped it back and forth a couple of times, I understand, up to a mile. Now, the Mississippi River ain't no little thing to play with. And I don't know if a construction who try to flip the thing around a mile at a time. So, you got all these forces out here that man doesn't even have an idea about. And here we are playing with them we're playing with the cat okay you get its fur charted up to a certain point it's going to turn around and bite you so my suggestion is that uh everybody kind of uh look at mother earth in a little bit different take maybe she is the mother that uh you know might give you a spanking if you don't act right but then again has that loving lap that you can crawl up into and feel secure in so it's our choice now the indian basis is to the extent of a religious honor to those things in nature that uh, are to be honored. That includes almost all the life. That includes the plants. That includes not uh, messing things up, clearing the land, but maybe, clear, maybe uh, going in and taking out a few trees here and there and uh, raking the leaves. This is something that I know for a fact it has been and uh, probably will continue to be done, I'm hoping. Um, and uh, the uh, areas that these people populated were natural areas. 
uh, some in the south where the gators are at in, in Florida, uh, some in the north where you've got the uh, bears uh, and whatnot. Um, these areas uh, have been husbanded, as it's called in, in the Bible, and husbandry is your caretaking in terms of your responsibility before the Creator for the area that you have control of. In other words, my property here not doesn't belong to me. It's the Creator's. We don't own it. And the uh, portion of my responsibility is to see that I take care of it in such a manner that all of the forms of life normally to be found there can flourish if they so choose or it's available to them. I'm to make try to help make it available. In other words, I don't cut all the grass as soon as I should because there's a lot of bees that come out and they're hungry. And they uh, go after uh, a variety of the flowers in the yard. And I make sure that I wait until it's just where I have to cut it. And then I wait a while again, let it go back up. Two reasons for this. Uh, the deer need something to eat too, and I leave it to them. So we got uh, wildlife to consider, and who's responsible for that? It is stated that the father, okay, and or creator is responsible to the wildlife to see that they can have a place to live. And that means that man's responsibility is not to go screwing with it pretty much. So, yes. <coughs> We've got a situation. Uh, hopefully, Mother Nature won't be too mad at us, or Gia, or whatever, however you want to put that. And hopefully, she won't deal with us too harshly. But, yes, she does things. Uh, you might want to look at uh, some of the things that are written by uh, David Wilcock and others uh, dealing with spirituality, the responsibility of man for his own uh, condition, and the fact that uh, we need to quit feeling superior just because we got a house and don't have to live outside, um, and maybe try to fit ourselves into what's already been provided in such a way that we don't screw it up for not only other people, but everything that lives there. Then you end up with a balanced ecology, a nice place to live, songbirds, flowers that bloom, a beautiful place to live. And it's basically the uh, spiritual entity of it. Am I still on? Yes. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this topic? Um, there's many people now that are slaughtering wolves like crazy, and they're an endangered species. We have people slaughtering bears and then taking pictures of it like they're, they're prizes. Um, and then you even have your deer. And they make up cockamamie excuses why they need to go out and shoot them. It's just ridiculous. What do you see developing with those tragic areas? Well, if you want to get into the into ecology, uh, in in terms of the reality of it, um, as I said, man screwed with things. One of the problems man has got is that he has uh, decided he can live anywhere, and I mean basically anywhere and that we can go into the woods and turn it into a grassy yard when it was woods before. Uh, when you go into an area like that, uh, the mountain lions and bears and wolves were there first. We are encroaching on their territory, not the other way around, okay? And I guarantee that you're not going to find a welcoming to those who go out of their way to uh, cause the situation for that that sort of slaughter. Now, I'm not going to say that it's wrong to kill, kill an animal because it's not. Um, we have been given these critters for varying reasons. You can eat the meat. This is not a... Uh, not something I took lightly, so I looked into it. Yeah, I, personally, uh, I don't like go ahead, bear I'm meat. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, it took me a minute. Um, I don't like bear meat, and I've had dog in Vietnam, and that didn't go too well either. Um, 
However, venison is good. I'm going to tell you. Deer is good. So squirrel. Now, the thing about uh, the husbandry comes into, the, into play here. You don't take cattle and run them up a mountainside and expect the mountain lions and bears to leave them alone. They don't work that way. And you're stupid if you think it does. You're also stupid to think that you have the right to go out and slaughter all of the uh, carnivores or predators uh, that are going to eat your cattle because you're stupid enough to stick them in their front yard. Uh, so uh, there's going to have to be a, a combination of adjustments. And part of those adjustments is that certain places in the mountains are going to be held as sacred, just like they had been for thousands of years, and as they should be. Some things should be left alone. And I've been challenged on my front porch where I live by a mountain lion. We came to the agreement. I shot a bullet over its head. It decided it wasn't a good idea that I was not on the menu. And, uh, you know, I might not taste good as lunch anyway, so it went the other way. A couple days later, it was in the driveway. I come walking out to have a cigarette and got hissed at. It knows who I am and respects the idea that I might be dangerous, if need be. Now, that does not mean that I do not connect with animals. The connection between a person and any animal, and it does not matter what it is, is a direct eye contact. The window of the soul, as people call it. When you connect with an animal or a bug or anything that's living that's got eyeballs, you make a permanent connection. That animal then telepathically instructs the other ones. This is how it works. People may not like it. That ain't my problem. Uh, my bees and wasps don't see me. They land on me in dark areas. But I don't have problems with them. I got a pair of uh, uh, Greg, we're hearing an awful lot of wind noise here. from you. Say what? We're hearing an awful lot of wind noise. Oh, you are? Okay. I'll go back in the house in that case. <laughs> you wasn't blowing when I came out. Um, the, uh, the, case, the case is simple. You got a choice. You are endowed with certain capabilities. Uh, one of those things is mentioned in the Bible, and it states that you are to subdue Mother Nature. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that does not mean that you're supposed to uh, violently control. It means that you are to understand it so that you can live within it without interference. It means that you are to learn how to uh, not have the wasps and bees coming after you, and this includes hornets. <laughs> it means that uh, you are to learn how to bond with these other uh, entities. And believe me, when you finally get the, get the guts to uh, look into the eyes of a spider that happens to get in your house sure. and really and really share yourself, then when you say, well, you're a pretty cool-looking critter, critter. Now, some people hate spiders, but there's, they are neat-looking. And I, put, I, cat, I get things on a piece of paper or my hand all the time, take them outside, and put them back where they belong. There isn't anything for them to eat in here anyway. So instead of starving them out or killing them, I take them back outside. Just that simple. When you show this to one it gets spread among all of the others. This is how this works. So when a rancher knows that he's going to have a problem with wolves and he goes out and makes contact in the same manner, uh, we'll allow you one, uh, one, one head of beef a month. And, you under, and this understanding has been made by the Indians. It's been done. We'll, have, we'll allow you one head, of, one head of, of beef a month and or a deer. I may even shoot the deer for you. But what we do is this. We make a, an agreement, and I'll have to tell you, it's really funny to watch. But they, the, the critters, these uneducated animals that, can, that have no understanding, understand. They agree to and comply with the agreement made. My agreement with the wasps and bees is they don't sting me, I don't kill them. 
I don't swat at them when they come to see me. 